Welcome all. In this lecture, we are going to solve example number seven. Draw the root locus plot for a unity feedback control system, where the forward part transfer function is given as g of s into h of s is equal to k into s plus one to the power two over s plus two ka whole square. So we need to plot the root locus on the s plane. So here we have to follow all the nine steps to plot the root locus. So the step number one is determination of number of poles and number of zeros. Since firstly we will calculate number of poles. Since we will calculate the number of poles by equating the denominator part to zero, on equating s plus two equals to zero, we will get two poles because it is a whole square. That's why we will get two poles and both will lie at s equals to minus two. So pole P one. Lies at s equals to minus two, and pole P two also lies as s equals to minus two. So the number of pole is equals to two here. Now calculate number of zeros. On equating the numerator part to zero, we will get the number of zeros. So on equating s plus one equals to zero, you will get the two zeros because it is a whole square. That's why s plus one on equating to zero we get our pole at s equals to minus one. So zero one will be at s equals to minus one, and zero two will also lies at s equals to minus one. So the number of zero is equals to two. Now move on to the step number two. That is calculation of number of branches. So the number of branches can easily be determined by the formula maximum of number of poles comma number of zeros so maximum of Since the number of pole is equal to two, and number of zero is also equal to two, so the maximum of two comma two is two. That's why we can say that two number of branch of the root locus is equal to two only. Moving on to the step number three, that is calculation of number of asymptotes. So the number of asymptotes can be calculated. By formula, number of poles minus number of zeros. Since number of pole is equal to two, and number of zero is also equal to two, that's why number of asymptote is equal to zero only. Since from the step number three, we can say that the number of asymptote is equal to zero, and since no asymptote lies on the real axis, that's why angle of asymptotes and centroid of asymptotes 
also doesn't exist here so step 4 and 5 angle and centroid of asymptotes doesn't lie of asymptotes does not exist moving on to the step number six that is root locus lies on which part of real axis so this can be evaluated by drawing the S plane this is imaginary axis this is real axis since we have two poles and both lies at s equals to minus 2 and we have two zeros that both lies at minus 1 now talking about the reasons this is plus infinite this is minus infinite so the reason 1 that is denoted by x1 will lie from minus 1 to plus infinite and the reason 2 will lie in between minus 2 to minus 1 and the reason 3 will lie between minus infinite to minus 2 Now talking about the reason 1 that lies between minus 1 to plus infinite that is this reason it is x1 it is x2 it is x3 so now observe that how many poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x1 since no poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x1 that's why it is an invalid reason now let's see that how many poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x2 so here two zeros both lies at minus one lies in the right hand side of x2 so two zeros lies in the right hand side of x2 talking about the reason three now calculate how many poles or zeros lies in the right hand side of x3 so here are the two poles and here are the two zeros that lies in the right hand side of x3 here is the x3 so two poles plus two zero that is four since two is an even number so it is an invalid reason four is also an even number so it is also an invalid reason so we can easily say that root locus does not lies on s plane real axis by observation we can also say that here no pole no two conjugate poles or no two conjugate zeros lies on the real axis that's why angle of uh, that's why we can also say that break in or break away point does not exist so break in or break away point not exist and also we can say that there are two no two imaginary poles or zeros that's why the concept of angle of arrival and the angle of departure is invalid so we can also say that 
angle of arrival and departure does not exist now moving on to the last and the final step that is step number 7 in which we will plot the root locus on the s plane so this is the s plane this is imaginary axis this is real axis since we have two poles and both are at s equals to minus 2 and also we have two zeros both are at s equals to minus 1 and the number of branches equals to 2 so the first branch of the root locus will emerge from this pole and departs at this zero following this path and another branch of the root locus will depart from s equals to minus 2 and emerge at this zero following this path since we have also calculated that uh, the root locus branch of the root locus doesn't lies on the real axis so this diagram also follows that condition that the root locus branch doesn't lie on the real axis and also it also follows a concept that uh, each and every branch of the root locus will emerge from the pole and go to the zero that's why it is a correct figure this is all about this question if you like my youtube video then please press the like button and subscribe to my youtube channel